Jose Maria Escriva is known as the saint of ordinary life. It was Escriva who founded Opus Dei, meaning the work of God, on the principle that people can find God right in the middle of their everyday lives. Yo no he fundado el Opus Dei. El Opus Dei lo ha hecho es cosa del Señor. Yo no he sido más que estorbo. ¿Está claro? Jose Maria had a powerful vision that deep spirituality could infuse every aspect of people's lives and they could love and serve God in their everyday work, with their families and in their friendships. Tú y yo debemos ser rebeldes de los otros, de los que dan soluciones. Soluciones de justicia y soluciones de caridad. Soluciones de cristiano. He was a priest who spent his life teaching ordinary people that living for God is not just for priests and nuns. Sed santos como es santo mi Padre Celestial. Y eso no lo dice solo a los que llevamos estas cosas, ¿eh? Dice a todos, a todos. People of every nation, race, and social condition could live the Christian calling in a new way by striving to be holy in the ordinary circumstances of their lives. A los casados, a los casadas, a los solteros, a los obreros, a los intelectuales, a los campesinos, a todos. Jose Maria Escriva's openness to the will of God began at an early age. Born into a devoutly Catholic family, Jose Maria would recite all his life the prayers his mother taught him. He suffered many hardships as a child. His three younger sisters died. His father's business collapsed and the family had to move to another city where they struggled to get by. When he was 15, he began to sense that God had a special mission for him. He had dreamed of being an architect, but instead became a priest to be ready for whatever God was asking, praying fervently, Lord, let me see what you want. During a retreat in Madrid, God showed him what he wanted. It was Opus Dei, a part of the Catholic Church that spreads the remarkable message that a person can find holiness in ordinary life. Father Jose Maria would dedicate his whole life to developing Opus Dei. Whenever he was asked about what happened that day, he would simply respond, I saw Opus Dei. But I think it's clear that from that very moment, he understood that ordinary Christians were called to holiness in their work and in the middle of the world, and that he was called to start an organization that would spread that message. The circumstances could not have been more challenging. Escriva was a poor, unknown priest, no financial resources, helpers or patrons. 1930s Spain was boiling with anti-clericalism. Priests were under attack. Churches and convents were burned. Nevertheless, relying on the power of prayer, he set out on a search for people who could understand his message and dedicate their lives to spreading it. Surrounded by political turmoil, which was often violent, Escriva refused to take sides and taught his followers to understand pluralism and to love and respect freedom growth was slow. After eight years, less than 20 people had joined Opus Dei. Then, war broke out. The Spanish Civil War brought even fiercer religious persecution. Thousands of priests and nuns were murdered. Father Jose Maria was forced to abandon his clerical dress and to go into hiding in Madrid moving from place to place to avoid capture and death. For a while, he hid in an insane asylum, pretending to be mentally ill. Later, he and a few members of Opus Dei found refuge in the Consulate of Honduras, where they lived in a single room. During this time, he still ministered to many people, at times risking his life to do so. This was a time of great danger for all priests. But Father Jose Maria felt he could not simply sit out the war in hiding, unable to carry out his priestly activities or work at the development of Opus Dei. So he decided to try to escape to the nationalist zone where religious activities were permitted. In the fall of 1937, Escriva traveled incognito to Barcelona and from there joined a group of smugglers for a series of dangerous night marches through the Pyrenees Mountains into Andorra. For the remainder of the war, he struggled to re-establish contact with the members and friends of Opus Dei. 
the civil war left Spain destroyed. A few months later, the Nazis invaded Poland, beginning the Second World War that devastated Europe. Spain remained neutral, but suffered scarcity of food and extreme hardship. Despite the difficult conditions, Father Jose Maria immediately resumed his activities in Madrid, and Opus Dei began to grow rapidly. It spread to other Spanish cities, and in 1944, three lay members, all engineers, became the first priests of Opus Dei. From the beginning, Escriva had seen that Opus Dei would be for all people and for all time. In 1946, he traveled to Rome to seek Vatican approval so that international expansion could begin. He would live there for the rest of his life. By the mid-1970s, Opus Dei would be flourishing in over 30 countries on six continents. Father Jose Maria wanted to personally teach members from all the new countries, so he oversaw the building of a large complex in Rome where young members could gather and study Christian doctrine and then return to their countries to spread it, along with the message of Opus Dei. He really threw himself into this battle of formation, as he called it. He spent hours and hours talking with his sons and daughters, and the optimism and confidence with which he did it was truly inspiring. Beginning in 1970, Father Jose Maria made long catechetical trips where he would meet with large groups of Opus Dei members and their friends to strengthen them in their Christian faith. Es la santificación del trabajo, es decir, a cada cristiano, cualquiera que sea su oficio, que allí donde está puede y debe ser un buen hijo de Dios. On June 26, 1975, he died suddenly of a heart attack and was buried in the Church of Our Lady of Peace in the central headquarters of Opus Dei in Rome. Immediately, people around the world began to pray to him for all their needs. On October 6, 2002, before an enormous crowd in St. Peter's Square, Pope John Paul II declared him to be a saint, referring to him as the saint of ordinary life. 